So I'm joined this evening by friend Mark McLean from Scotland, living in England now. And we just thought we'd have our evening chat on on things Catholic and Marian. And uh, Mark, if you want to update us on, on your on your latest travels to a very important Marian shrine. Yes, thanks for having me back on. It's always a pleasure, Robert. I've been back for the last couple of days. I went to Medjugorje for the first time in a few years. I think that might be my sixth or seventh time in total. And uh, I'm just soaked in peace. I just feel so good. I really do. Um, there's a, it was wonderful graces happening there as always. Some new people met and... Yeah, just that piece kicked in, a piece that I almost forgotten about for a little while. Um, it was absolutely amazing. And it was my wife's first time there. She absolutely loved it as well. Uh, lots of praying, following the programme. For me, out of the few sites that I've now been to in pilgrim, uh, in pilgrimage, love them all, would go back to them all, which is Lourdes, Fatima, Garabandal, but Medjugorje for me this time especially stood out as taking the crown. You know, the, the, the conversion, the peace that is in here in the heart, it's so personal, it's so loving, it's, it's the peace. And that that personal conversion, a true sincere conversion, and everything that comes with that way, uh, was absolutely amazing. Yeah. I mean, I, I think Medjugorje, the way it's set up, it really just lends itself to a, a pilgrimage style, um, especially the evening program, mm -hmm. that 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then afterwards, the 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. If you're going out for a meal, you know, that that evening program, I you don't have it in knock. I've never seen it. I mean, sometimes you get it in Fatima, but it's not consistent. It depends if there's a vigil or something. And um, in... Um, in other places, it's very, very different. Uh, I like uh, if I compare to Chenstehova, which is a, a massive Marian shrine. Chenstehova has its own atmosphere, its own way of doing things, you know, and uh, a very, very beautiful shrine to visit, like you know, profoundly beautiful. Uh, but um, uh, even if you go to Guadalupe in Mexico, there there's various times in the year when there's lots going on, but there's really nothing there in the evening it, and you know um, very little community as such it's a place you go to you visit and then you leave whereas i think with metrogoria because so many of us have to fly in there you know and stay there you're, you're kind of building up this mini community uh atmosphere and um just for that i recommend it i recommend it as a good catholic holiday <laughs> and uh and i know people criticize the the that it's become very commercial um but the commercial for me you know you, you need sensible commercial decisions when you go to a place that you're not left you know not a place to eat or or a um uh, a place to to sleep and stuff like that you know and we we go to we go to knock here in ireland you don't have that many places to actually eat um or it's sometimes in a, in a busy day it could be hard to even get a place to eat so it's a, it's interesting to see how Medjugorje is set up in that regard yeah more places to eat i would say but the commercial side that's grew a little bit has brought a lot of jobs to the area because before the apparitions, I think it was like 500 in the village, yeah. they were going through hardships with the communist regime, staying close to their faith and therefore not being able to get jobs because of that. And um, even sacrificing their own beds and homes for the pilgrims in the early years as well. They're great people in Medjugorje, great faith. Yeah. Um, but this has brought a lot of jobs to the area and things. And I don't, I don't feel overwhelmed with the commercialization side. It's one no. big long road, mainly, um, that has the shops and restaurants. But once you're in the church grounds and everything behind there, to the Risen Christ statue, through the, the fields, up to the hills and everything, it's very quiet. It's very, like, with nature, it's, it's very prayerful, very uh, set up the way it should be. It's yeah. just that one busy main road going through a town, really. Yeah. But Fatima and Lourdes are the same, if not more. They've had a lot longer to be set up that way. And yeah. Garabandal hasn't changed at all since the beginning. Maybe one or two little shops within the homes that are already built there. 
but they they haven't taken on any big multi million dollar complexes or anything which says a lot as well. Um, but yet yeah, coming from the heart, coming from the spirit side, that retreat, uh, that pilgrimage last week was just absolutely amazing. Yeah. I'm so glad to have been back. Um, I don't want to leave it years in between. I don't think maybe go back every one or two years for a little break because I've never went to Medjugorje and left without getting something so real. Yeah, yeah. And it really gets to me, especially when I went back this week. I see sometimes other platforms, they'll give their opinions why they don't believe in it and things like this. And I'm like, oh, you need to just get there. And I know people have said that to them and they even say so, but they still haven't been. And the Vatican has put it down a shrine status with the fruits, the consistency of pilgrims and everything else. And um, the commission set up with Pope Benedict several years ago have put the findings to the Holy See and have recommended the first seven uh, messages and apparitions should be stamped with approval. So it's going in the right direction anyway. But yeah. when you get there and you see that prayer program, the Eucharist is the heart of Medjugorje, adoration every day yeah. in one chapel, at the adoration chapel itself, or with thousands of people outside in the open altar every single night. It's it's phenomenal, and the cues to confession are never without many many yeah. people queuing up. Yeah, been an average of half an hour waiting for confession every time I go, at least. Yeah, yeah. it's constant, absolutely yeah. constant, and from every language I could see, it was just it's it's a powerhouse of faith and grace. Yeah, There's no doubt about it. Yeah, I mean but that's that's what I saw as well. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. And it was actually, I mean, while we're there, then I may as well talk, because something, I sense this time, though, unlike any other time, there was a gentle but sincere pressing of the times that we're in, like time is running short, make your choice, all in or not. And uh, we can maybe elaborate on that if you want me to in a bit. But I was talking to a couple of people that have been staying out there for the past year or six months or whatever, and I was saying, you know, 17, 18 years ago, I was first here and you hear all about the early days and all these miraculous signs and healings and miracles. And you don't hear so much anymore. I think it's all calming down now or something. And <laughs> the lady says, not when you're living here. It's not. It's happening all the time. In fact, just last week, there was a group of Irish pilgrims all says that they saw a lady just near Blue Cross. Uh, near at the bottom of uh, Apparition Hill. They could describe her all in the same fine detail, right down to even her nails and her hands and, her, and everything, her veil, everything. And um, another lady was telling me that she, uh, someone came and sat down with a group of them and were, the rosary beads had just changed gold and she brought hers out and put them next to hers and they just turned gold in front of everyone's eyes to see it at the same time. You know, uh, so I've never seen that myself, but, but it's, uh, I never once looked up to the sun, never once looked up to anything like that. I've, I've been going a few times now. It's been 18 years I'm aware of it all. You know, my own video content on the channel and, and, and whatever else, but this was just for the heart. This was just allowing more of him, less of me. And I could have sat in adoration those last two or three days especially. I could have just sat in adoration without a time limit i just wanted to stay wasn't yeah. to pray wasn't to meditate i did do that but i just wanted to stay yeah you know so peaceful it was brilliant but yeah a couple of times we heard just a little sentence coming from the priest in that that stood with me you know like this is the time where you're choosing to fast as an yeah. example but very soon you won't have the choice mm -hmm. and what does that mean yeah. You know, because <laughs> he's a it's Father Leon, he's uh he's spoken publicly in his talks that he gave us over there that he himself has had a couple of experiences and an apparition and things like that. He's not allowed to tell us everything just yet as such, but that was one thing that stood out. And I also a little challenge as well, you know, like why do you come every time you come if you don't love the messages? What's the purpose in coming all the time? You have to love it, and the, and time is running short. He was speaking to Maria, the visionary, apparently, the week before, and she was pressing that, that the time is so short now. 
hurry up and make your decision, live the messages. And we're seeing a couple of videos pop up, aren't we, about this October. We're hearing a lot of chatter. I'm certainly hearing a lot of chatter about it being the key to the big 50th anniversary. The synod and synodality coinciding and what's going on there, which brings in Garabindal. In my recent video, I had Pope Francis in the centre and all these arrows round about him. It's not just one or two or three coincidences. It's like a dozen or more. Yeah. And even in Medjugorje, one thing I realised is, and I know it myself, I don't want to focus too much on all that signs of the times, and and it's not about doom and gloom. We know bad things are on the horizon and coming to the doorstep very soon. But even with that being said, the people are aware of that in Medjugorje, whether it's priests, whether it's the expats, whether it's other pilgrims, they're aware of it. And that was quite refreshing to know it's not just me behind the computer talking about it. But they give it a lot, they know it's there and they keep it clear, but they're giving one percent to it. The 99% left is pray, 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 Eucharist, yeah. fasting, confessions, you know, reading the sacred scriptures. And it's abundantly clear as to why she's repeating all this time to do that is the fact that we we need deep roots, you know, like a tree real old deep deep roots that go down deep deep into the ground because when the storm comes we need to stand against it and you can't do that with knowledge or conspiracies or knowing the signs of the times the only way you can stand up against that is living those messages living the faith and if it's the case it's all done by love and whatever god's calling us to will endure yeah we'll pass the test please god yeah. And that really hit me that hit me a lot this year. Yeah. I think I think we're all we're all wondering um you know what what is in store and uh, uh, it's certainly going to be an interesting time for the world for the church um uh, with with what's going on in Ukraine um what's going on in Rome uh with the pope going to moscow in a couple of weeks apparently on his fuel happens to be um his his plane happens to be landing going to russia to refuel uh as as you do when you go to mongolia which hardly has any catholics um uh, so it's it's a very very interesting time in the church where the pope will go to mongolia to meet 2000 catholics but he hasn't been to argentina his home country um so uh, these well, are these... I've, I've been told he's been pushing and pushing to get to Russia since 2017 and it just doesn't seem to have been getting accepted in a rush by Krill or by Putin Yeah, but that's the one thing everyone of Garabindal has been waiting for all these decades since the 60s when that, prophet, that prophecy was given it's when the Pope returns from Moscow not Russia when he returns from Moscow, soon afterwards, everything hits the fan, not just yeah. in society, not just with the war with Russia and all this, but also coming from with the church itself. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to come at once. And from the 60s through the 70s, 90s, the 20s, 10s and whatever, we haven't seen any factors fitting that he would go anytime soon. We haven't seen other things in the world that would make sense as to why now. But I would say in the last 12 months, there's quite a few things that's clearly making it logical enough to have an idea. Although, again, we can't predict the future. But for the last 20 years, I couldn't have been saying half the stuff that I've been saying the last 12 months. And that's what's really making me not get excited to do the more videos, but get more adamant in the prayer, get more adamant in the spiritual life. Again, back to the messages like she's been telling us to do, you know, how to live the faith. Um, but if he's going to Moscow and we're at the point where we're approaching the synod and synodality, which is going from October to October, this being the 50th year of Akita, and we know the clear yeah. message given of Akita come this October 13th. It's coinciding with a great synod. And that's exactly what Garvin Dahl speaks about when it coincides with a great synod. We speak about the warning, also known as the illumination of conscience that is to occur 
coinciding with a great synod. But a lot of things, and I know like Glenn and them, you've I've had interviewed and I've, I've, I've talked to him um, with the Garab and Dal stuff. He, uh, he's put things off in the chats and you know, people guessing dates and all this stuff. He says, I ain't interested in any of it until I see the Pope going to Moscow. Really? It's always been the one, the, it's a key indicator of things coming is the Pope going to Moscow. Now, We've waited what sixty years or so, nearly, and it's just for refueling the jet. It's finally in Moscow, and that's all it's going to be. Yeah. Should we have a state visit? Should it be the case he's getting Putin and what's his name from Ukraine shaking hands for a press conference, bringing about peace? It'd be more fitting. But he is the first pont of since Garab and Dal in the sixties to be landing in Moscow if he goes to Moscow. Yeah. And I don't know how it works out with an airport because technically it's an international thing. You know, like some things you say you're not in the country until you step out the airport or something like that. But it's still Moscow Airport, isn't it? Yeah. It's in Moscow. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know how how much we have to be uh, reading into it all. But if he's in Moscow, that's enough for me to really have my radar polished and waiting. Because we're seeing the pressure in Russia now. Again, I haven't been watching much news or TV, which is great, uh, going away in pilgrimage. But I see they've had a lot of attacks with drones hitting Moscow. They've lost a couple of ships or something like that. Mm. They're not getting it easy. Yeah. And if that makes Putin all the more desperate to do something, yeah. then again, this is all coinciding with the times. Yeah. It's coinciding with a few other factors that we're talking about. The Moscow trip, the Synod, the 50th anniversary of Akita, there's so many things coinciding, and then you're hearing in Medjugorje, without it being too much of a thing, just a couple of reminders, they're really pressing how short the time is. Yeah. There, yeah. There's so many things happening. Um, I was speaking to an Orthodox priest today living in the area for a good six hours straight with another friend. He's all over all this stuff as well. Mm -hmm. And the, the headliner for me he said that his community of priests are not preparing for retirement. They're preparing for martyrdom. Really? That's what he said. That's I'll leave that for another time. I'm going to try and get him on my own channel and that. But yeah, and you know what? It doesn't bring us any peace with it all. We know what's happening from digital currencies to 15-minute cities to try to bring us in false meats and all this and whatever else they're trying to do to control us. And ever they also try to push out Christian identity from the schools, from the, the public square. You can see it's all there. It's not something away in the distance in the next 15, 20 plus years. It's happening now. Yeah. And it's the frog in the pot where it's cold water simmering, boiling, and then it just blows yeah. up dead. It never jumps out. Yeah. And we're so used to that that we're actually at the point where it's been getting simmering for quite some time now, but it's getting warmer. Yeah. And at well, least we're aware of it. As the UN says, we're 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 in the boiling zone now. It's it's uh, we've gone from cold to warm. warm. <laughs> <laughs> but they've they've truly boiled us with their with their ideas anyway. Well, that's the other thing with Garbin Dal is that something the time will come where they're so hot or with the burning and stuff that they can try and get in the water and it'll still be burning them as well. So I don't yeah. know if that's the heat or something else they take or whatever, I don't know. But we just need to wait to see how things plan out. But I always said for a while that when I see the idea of the Pope going to Moscow, I'll be on the ceiling and then I'll be on my knees praying like never before because yeah. that was a big indicator. Yeah. And there's so many and I do I feel as if we need to take, keep special attention to what's coming between now and, and this October. Yeah. Really yeah. do. And yeah. remember the Synod continues into next October as well, 2024. So yeah. we just need to, we need to keep our eyes open and just keep the faith. Yeah. Have to persevere. I think that was a key word for me at the beginning of the year, like the new year star and what and the the word I kept feeling that I need to persevere, and something Ivan and Medjugorje said in his talk that I listened to once. There's little things I probably heard before, but you know that way something comes again and just hits you fresh with conviction. You know that perseverance. You know, and Our Lady, pray, pray, pray. 
he says prayer pray to pray more is a choice. You're yeah. either going to do it or you're not. To pray more is a choice. To pray better is a grace. Yeah. You know, practice makes perfect. Just pray, pray, and pray more, and you'll get better through grace. But you have to choose to do it outside your comfort zone. When you're tired, do a little bit more. And especially in a place like Medjugorje, you can push yourself more uh, just to go away and pray privately, to go to the the church or the adoration chapel, the aces of peace, the hills, the risen Christ statue, even to the graveyard to pray for the dead, wherever. You pray in your room. It's yeah. just there's an abundance of opportunity on a pilgrimage like Medjugorje to just pray more than you would ever normally do. And if you can take even 50% of that amount back home with you, which is more than normal, you're on the right path. Yeah, yeah. You know? I don't know if you've seen uh, Tom Medjugorje's channel. He's 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 doing going around interviewing people that he finds in Medjugorje. Yeah, I just came across it. I don't think I ever see him in front of the channel. Someone yeah. told me to watch him. And the thing is, I noticed a few people last week popping up on his channel. So he must have passed me in the street and we haven't realised each other. I haven't uh, noticed it, but I noticed a few people there the same week as me were talking in the middle of the street with him. So somehow I've missed them. Yeah, because like if you look at his channel, he's doing like this mega documentary of of people that he's meeting. Like at, at the end of the day, if you want to do in the future a a documentary on Medjugorje, his channel really is the mega documentary. I mean, he's he's <laughs> and it's quite amazing. You know, you're listening to all these people, all these stories, um, you know, real faces, real stories, what happened to them um and uh you can't deny that there's definitely something happening there i mean i had that experience um with medjugorje when you know when our lady said to you know do a prayer group when you come back to ireland and the first man that came to the prayer group and he knows who he is you know um we had a massive experience with medjugorje of him being called out to medjugorje uh, by somebody that I that by a priest I asked I he went that I sent him to in Ireland and uh, he came back and you know and he's in the Legion of Mary now and you see all of these conversions and it's very very providential mm. um uh you know to see it there and uh and I said it and I said it to uh, I said it to people you know and uh, uh you know I I've no doubts at all that there is something happening there but I what I what I find very concerning is it it's very direct now it's not it's it's like our it's like it's like get your act together type of come on guys wake up you know are, are you ready for what's coming type of attitude um or are you just sitting back and uh and, and and letting this all come upon you so um you know our ladies our ladies really standing up leaders at this moment in time like to action take actions and i will see in time what does this mean you know yeah, well, I was speaking to another lady from Canada who's been out there quite some time. It's been going for years. She's been out there six months just now. And I was saying that exact same thing to her when I spoke to her. And um, she says that there's many priests coming here now that have been clearly told to come. Mm. They're, rece they're receiving locutions. They're receiving clear mystical experiences of one sort of another directly from heaven, whether it's Jesus or Our Lady or, or something like that. And I'm like, really, all the priests here? She says, well, the faithful ones. Yeah. The ones that are praying, the faithful ones. I was like, all right. But many priests that have been coming in the past recent year or so, the way she led me to believe, I've really they're collaborating a lot. I think they're collecting a lot of um things that the priests are saying privately to one another and things and it's, it's very clear that god's rise raising up his prophets you know yeah. and stuff like that and and some of the stories that you were hearing was just phenomenal it's really the working of the holy spirit but there is something that's bringing them together i know of a priest i think he's dutch he's meant to be quite famous for reading souls he was there uh, the last couple of years. My dad got to confession with him. Something really out of it. Um, there's another priest from Ireland, apparently, that can read souls, has been going to Medjugorje now. There are other priests coming from all over, and they seem to be 
getting some sort of clear message directly from heaven. Yeah. Like yeah. The, time, the time is short. Yeah. You know. I suppose we just have to see the fruits of of what is happening in people's lives when they do go to Medjugorje. I mean, a lot of of the traditional side are very cautious and they're not they're, they're very critical of the place. But there's a lot of Catholics that go to Medjugorje and come back and start going to traditional Latin Mass, start having a, a greater reverence for the Eucharist, praying the Rosary, devotion, um, fasting, you know, apostolate, going out. You know, you, you see people going to Med and coming back and actually and actually being apostles, you know, physically going out uh, and 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 evangelizing. You know, it's it's a it's a great school of evangelization, and I and I'd love the church to do a massive study on all of that to see the actual fruit as it trickles out. Mary's meals, for example, massive apostolate, um, and it's um you know you see this this happening, um, you know, coming out into the church at the moment. Um, there was a priest with me in seminary he's a priest now but we, he was a seminary with me and he came from the army and now he's a chaplain in the army he's in his 50s and he's he's been a priest for what 30 years and he just thinks Medjugorje is a place of heaven he goes there every year and he do and like he's he's seen untold fruit and it's helped him in his priesthood and you have like over 800 priests in the church who found their vocation in Medjugorje like yeah. where where would you get where would you get uh like it says it's, if you were to put all those eight hundred together and then you've had a lot of priests who've gone there and had conversions, so like literally you have thousands of uh, of priests and religious that have found a, something in in Medjugorje, um you know for me for me it was Krushivats it was the Cross Mountain was uh, just a massive experience for me, um. Uh, and just walking up there and walking down, it was just something so powerful, so 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 beautiful. And uh, um, you know, I've I've no doubt about it. When you when you look at Tom Medjugorje's web channel and you see this massive documentary that's collating, uh, because it, it was interesting. It was interesting last year. I was out in Medjugorje with a lady from here, Eileen McGuire. and she died in a uh, in a car crash on the twenty fifth of March this year. And, um, you know, as soon as that happened, she happened to have given an interview with Tom Medjugorje. And so we were able to pull out her her interview and the family got a lot of comfort from the interview that she gave back in in, in October when she was in Medjugorje. And, right. uh, you know, you just see the, you know, it, it, it helped them deal with the with the tragedy, you know, because this woman had so much faith so i i am um i've no doubt that our lady is working in a very powerful way but uh the way i see what's happening in medjugorje and my experience of what what is happening in medjugorje is our lady is actually taking people by the arm she's actually taking people you know and bringing them along and encouraging them and you know uh and and you know, you, you see this in their lives and people are transformed. They are seeing their problems in a different way. This isn't fake conversion, sentimentalism or emotion. This is real conversion, lifelong, profound towards our Lord, towards the Eucharist, towards the Mass. People going to traditional at Mass, you know tons of people up north and you see them going to 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 um, introduce Christ the King or other places. So there's there's definitely fruits there. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I just wish the certain ones that seem to just have an opinion, but very uninformed, with no experience of being there either, just to go. Yeah. It's at the point where I'm, I'm, I'm sick of listening to the opinions where there's nothing back in it. Just go. Yeah. And then talk to us after it. That's how but, confident we are. Yeah. But what, what uh, the suggestion I would say, if people are going there, is uh do, you know just just go I, I you know and i give this advice to people just go as a catholic holiday you know go in that frame of mind to to get confession to go to go to mass to experience uh you know this catholic village this catholic oasis because uh, some people i saw one guy he went over there and he made a commentary when nothing happened to me i didn't see anything and you know 
like if you're if you're going there for our late to 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 perform to us, I think you'd be very mistaken. You have to go and say and ask the question. If you have something here for me, I'm open to to receiving whatever whatever direction you want to give and 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 just be humble and experience the beauty of catholicism the sacraments i mean i that was what i loved the most the confession the adoration the mass the the that was just beautiful for me and um i could have just happily stayed there just doing that actually the time for prayer that's what i wanted just time for prayer mm -hmm. that's do you right. know and uh i was just bowled over and I, I, I can't wait to go back in october that's probably a good place to be in October, just in case. <laughs> I know. I I think I think there's a reason why this is all happening in October. You know, I'll get a week off in October. I'll let you check the diary with you, then maybe go back myself. <laughs> we'll get a week off. Yeah, because we're doing walk to cross from the 14th to the 16th in uh in um in September here in Ireland. And then I have a men's retreat in uh, in Lewisburg on the last Saturday of September uh, with in, um, Jim Burns' place. Uh, and then the day afterwards on Sunday evening, I fly out to Dubrovnik and and then I'll make my way to 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 Medjugorje. So I, I haven't booked a return ticket yet, so I have to see. Uh, but it's, uh, it's the only holiday I've had so far this year and um you need one that's for sure it's been an interesting year yes yes absolutely we normally book stuff as a family but i just knew i wasn't going to be able to go away this year and and you know it played out the way it did so yeah yeah well we did do two nights in dubrovnik which after six times passing it on the way to medjugorje this time uh there was my wife who says a couple of days in Dubrovnik and I'm glad we did. It was good to break it up a little bit. I balanced yeah. out very well. Two days in Dubrovnik, six nights in Medjugorje, and back home from split this time. Uh but there's a funny thing that happened in Dubrovnik actually, because obviously a few churches and all that there and they're beautiful as well. Um, but because it's that sandstone way and we're going through the little alleys and all this and just checking it out. And we see the chiselled signs, the street names inside the rock itself on, on the walls. Yeah. And it was like Giuseppe, and then the other one was Maria. You know, so you had Joseph and Mary streets, <laughs> and we're walking down. And then you hear all the noise, and you can see shops as we're going through the narrow way. I says, this is like Joseph and Mary looking for Jesus in the, the, the temple or something. And um, as soon as we turned the corner, oh, we found them. The Eucharistic Adoration in this very small chapel, right with shops in every direction, front to the side, in this alleyway. But I just thought that was quite funny how we're just, uh, you're thinking about that, and then you turn around and there he was in the Eucharist. And probably yeah. sees maybe a dozen people. And you wow. still get a lot of noise outside, but it was still nice to get in and just sense that peace and prayerfulness uh, with yeah. a couple of people that were also there. I found that quite entertaining. Um, but no, this time with Medjugorje, it was my wife's first time. And she's lived her faith all her days. Very pure heart, spirit, you know, very patient. And she, she's just remarkable. And I knew as soon as she would go to a place like Medjugorje with that way that she is and her, her integrity and her character, she absolutely loved it. Loved yeah. it. Same yeah. reasons I've already listened, uh, listed. She absolutely loved it. And um, I managed to get a favour from someone. I wonder if it could happen. I was kind of, I don't like to push it because they're always chasing people, priests and whatever, and, and uh, visionaries. And they're very quiet and private now, I would say, more than ever, the visionaries. And um, long story short, we managed to get into a van's apparition last Sunday. And that was obviously a big highlight for us. But I would say the days after it, Nothing exceptional happened of signs and wonders, but the message really had comfort from what I was praying about. And um, the day after and the day after that, then the third day, so certain things that I wanted lifted were lifted and a great sense of peace, a sense of energy to stay out and do more and more. Yeah. All that kind of came in. We were extra happy, more than we already were. It just something grew and grew. Yeah. You know, it was it was just something beautiful. Yeah. But yeah, people need to get out there, really see what it's for, and um, 
I guarantee everybody you'll your lives will be changed. You will have an experience of the heart, at least. If you go with an open heart, do what you should do and push yourself a little bit more, you'll get yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, that's that's my experience as well. I mean, because if uh, it, it, it's just, you know, go with an open heart. I think uh, the, key, the key is go, go, go with humility and just say, I'm just here to adore our Lord, you know, and that's the expectation that we should put uh, if people are going for something to something to to happen to them out of the blue i don't know if they're if they're going to experience that but um i mean i just love the i just love the time to pray I, and i can't wait just to go back for time for prayer that is the only thing i want to do <laughs> this time and um and that and um, and i'm really looking forward to that you know and just to relax and pray and and uh, we'll see where it goes for sure anyway um so uh we will have a very interesting october with uh you know october the 13th and and that day ties into akita as well if i'm not mistaken right yeah so october 13th this is where the little analytical mindset and my me comes in october 13th 1884 was pope leo the 13th's mystical experience where god gave satan the time to test the church that's where we get the St. Michael the Archangel prayer from because of that. 33 years later to the date on October 13th, 1917, was the miracle at Fatima. And then years later, October 13th, 1973, was the big message of Akita. I think it was the third message in total that time. And this was the one where she spoke about how You'll see Satan infiltrating high up in the church. You'll see cardinals against cardinals, bishops against bishops. Those who have devotion to Our Lady will be despised by their confreres. Uh, the, the demon will press many to leave uh, their ministries and all that as well. And, um, and if people don't change, the Father will inflict a great chastisement. Yeah. Now that chastisement later on, she's like she says, could come through the human race itself. Yeah. You know, so well, we're talking war, we're talking biological, when it's up to two thirds of humanity. Yeah. You know, if it's to come through the human race itself. Um, but it was a very, very blunt message. And many believe that that last part of the chastisement seems to fit in context with other uh, prophecies of the mystics and apparitions and stuff that seems to come as a, a near conclusion of the end when other things are beforehand you know so it's just to see where things go but if let's say we believe in Medjugorje as I do as you do we're going to be taken along the way because the secrets have to be revealed in advance before they yeah. happen yeah oh so three days before they happen it will be announced to the world the priest and the visionary, according to Mariana in her book, uh, they'll fast and pray for seven days. The priest then reveals the secret, and then within three days it'll happen. Wow. So uh, we will know along the way. Yeah. Yeah, that, because yes. yeah, because with, with Garbandal, it's, um, uh, you know, it's kind of very precise whether you believe it or not. And, um, and you know, the... It's 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 going to be an interesting time. To a lot of people have put faith in these supposed re things that are going to pass. Uh, so it'll be an interesting number of years to see how they plan out and how they actually do. Uh, they do work out, you know. Well, I had a an unexpected phone call. I didn't even recognize the full name of the person. But then my wife says, that's so-and-so. I was like, ah, all right. So I answered the phone. And this was the evening, about an hour or two after Ivan's apparition last Sunday in Medjugorje. I get the phone call. And the lady says she just had been to New Dawn in Walsingham. And she was speaking to a priest who apparently says he was going out to Garbendale in the next few weeks to interview the visionaries. And he, she did say that he also mentioned Conchita. So mm. take her at her word saying this. Uh, but he says it's not long to go now. Okay. It's not long to go things, but I get in touch obviously with Glenn, uh, who does all the Garbandale work and works with Conchita and that, and keeps in touch with her. 
And he says, well, she's still in the States for now and it's no knowledge to him that that's what's to happen. Conchita hasn't given any interview in at least a couple of decades. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah. but I know. I know Jacinta's out there just now. Okay. Uh, I see people popping up with a photograph of her last week. She's there. Um, okay. Mario Loli passed. Mar Mary Cruz is elsewhere in Spain, as far as I I was led to believe. Yeah. Um. So, I d I don't really know what that conversation was about, but the priest was very, very clear apparently, and she felt it in her heart to phone me and tell me. Yeah. So we'll just see what happens. You know, we'll just yeah. see. Yeah. But um, there's enough things happening round about now where we're very much keeping our eyes open. Yeah. <laughs> the the big thing with Garb and Dal was always the Pope going to Moscow, and now it's finally arriving, possibly. Yeah. yeah. He has been put. Pope Francis has been pushing it for some reason, apparently since 2017. And well, he, he had said in an interview that he's been working on a like a secret peace treaty. He said, yeah. "I'm willing to do anything it takes." He's trying to work it, and Zelensky and Putin apparently were surprised to hear that this is what he's been trying to do. Yeah, and if I remember correctly, when reading it from one book or another with Garb and Dal, things are very bad and hostilities. But when the Pope goes to Moscow, things seem to be calm, uh, as if something's been successful. But shortly after his return from Moscow, hostilities break out in all parts of Europe, and then that's when we're that's when it's rolling. There's yeah. no going back. Yeah. Um, and eventually, whatever bad it gets to, this is when God steps in as a merciful act. Remember, yeah. it's still mercy. He steps in with the illumination of conscience to to get ourselves realizing we're how far we're fallen mm. and stop ourselves from basically annihilating ourselves. Yeah. Well, God stepping yeah. in is an act of mercy. There's nothing to be afraid of, although the illumination of conscience is nothing. That we're going to enjoy, yeah. It's an act of mercy, yeah. You know, it'll it'll be interesting time when I look at the synodal document that the Irish delegation is going to present in Rome, the synthesis, and I just wonder, like, um, what's in what's not in that document, you know, says as much about the process as what is in the document. And uh, you know, it's 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 really the the woke agenda that has creeped into the church. That you know, we'll we nearly have to apologize for even having a deposit of the faith. And and I just wonder, you know, how far have we fallen, and where where this ultimately will will move. And uh, but so it'll be interesting to see what 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 comes in in October. I I pray that this synod doesn't happen. And I know that there are others in the church doing the same. We're praying that that the delegations don't go to Rome. And, and I know personally that, you know, there are people named by Pope Francis who are not very comfortable with, what, with what's on the agenda at this synod um, uh, and what would be discussed. And so, the, you know, so we'll see where this this heads in, in the next couple of weeks as, as we draw near to, to October. Well, one thing that corrected me, again, focusing on that stuff with the content of my own videos, never brings peace or anything, but I think that's where the recharge and the resets got me back a little bit after Medjugorje pilgrimage there. Um, but remember, Satan is the roaring lion. You hear the lion, you're afraid of the lion, it's in your face, you know? And God is that gentle whisper. Who does he need yeah. to prove himself to? Who does he need to try and get attention from? He's yeah. Almighty God, and see for Satan's getting all his time to do what he has to do, and doing all these things that might be still worrying and disturbing to some people to hear it. Just remember, after all this build up of the past century, especially, see when things come to pass, and Lady stepping in with her plan, and with the glory of God, it's like a century of build up of the evil one. God's just going to come in. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it, that's that's what it is. He's won. He's won the victory. It's already yeah. won. And it's a case of deciding which side are you on. It's not half in, half out, as Lucia Fatma have told, has said. It's a decisive battle between yeah. the Church of Jesus Christ and the Church of the Antichrist, between His Church and the False Church. 
You know, that last battle over marriage and family, we will have to be inconvenienced. We will have to have sacrifices made in the name of our faith when other things start rolling about soon, this decade. Yeah. Um, but we need to learn just to be inconvenienced and have a little sacrifice, get away from too much comfort, because then we're measuring our love for them. And again, those have been preparing spiritually for all these years, such as Medjugorje messages and living them. They have that foundation and ready for it compared yeah. to others that are just going for a register every Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a, ones that aren't even going and say they're Catholic and turn up at the kids' holy communion and then a few years later for confirmation and whatever. They, they, that ain't making the grade from what I'm picking up this year. Yeah. You no, know, a solid yeah. all in or nothing, exactly. all or nothing. Yeah, and it yeah. really has hit me. It really has. Yeah. I've not learned the words or phrases that I haven't heard before, but something's just hit me yeah. since that yeah. pilgrimage. And yeah. I can't make excuses for myself. I really can't. Yeah. Well, look, uh, Mark, I think I'm going to wrap it up here because uh, I hear somebody calling me downstairs when it was a pleasure talking to you. And it, it, it's going to be an interesting next number of weeks. And if people have any commentary or questions, leave them down below and we can we can open them up in discussion next time and see and see if uh, we can get some answers to them. I may have a little miracle story to speak about in my upcoming videos, but I want to make sure everything's cleared first Yeah, uh, before doing that. So that's there's okay. a lot more that's happened during this week. Um, but I'll ho I'm claiming the victory in Jesus' name, but I'm waiting to be sure um, with the doctors and stuff and whatever I've been praying for. But stay tuned for that because I'm going to really make sure that gets out there and a few other things as well. That's but yeah, great. let's keep chatting. Let's keep, uh, let's keep the faith talks going as okay. well. Anything you want to talk about until the next time then. That'd be, be great. Good. Okay. That's great. God, God bless. bless you. Take you care. Too.